I am constantly reminded how lucky we are to have a watershed like this. The sunlight will be hitting the rocks at a certain angle and the shadows will accentuate the shapes of the trees and the cliffs above us. It's a all-encompassing emotional experience. You don't have to fish. I'm the fourth generation of the Ibarl Guest Ranch. My great-grandparents started it uh, in the early 1900s. I feel deeply honored that my family's guest ranch can provide people that opportunity to be on the river. In my lifetime, the river has gone from this threatened piece of water with a degraded fishery back to the hallowed waters of Norman McLean's the river runs through it. This iconic piece of water that people from all over the world come to. What I mainly do in life is fly fishing. I fly fish in my spare time and I fly fish as a, an occupation. Obviously I read the book, A River Runs Through It, and it was nagging inside me all that time, the Blackfoot, the Blackfoot. I, I really want to see the Blackfoot. I actually caught my first cutthroat trout way up into the North Fork. It left me breathless and speechless actually. You know, whether you're looking up Montour Creek, up the North Fork, up the Clearwater, they're full of game. They're all crystal clear water. Trout in them are all wild, they're all native. They were born there. You don't find that almost anywhere else. The population of fish in the main stem Blackfoot is directly correlated to how well our tributaries are functioning. These fish require cold, clean, complex and connected habitat. And when you look at over 200 streams, the North Fork, Montour Creek, West Fork Clearwater, Morel Creek, these are the cream of the crop. These are in the top 10 for protecting West Slope Cutthroat and bull trout. These watersheds in this landscape used to have bull trout pretty much throughout. A lot of the areas that are protected in the Blackfoot Clearwater Stewardship Act are key places for bull trout protection and a turner protection for a lot of other species at the same time. People don't need to care about bull trout. You can care about grizzly bears or wolverine or Wessel cutthroat trout or any of these other species and they're all basically benefiting from the same action that needs to be taken. The reason that we focus on bull trout is because they're such a good indicator of environmental quality and whether the rest of the food web is doing well. The thing that's really important is that we have connectivity and that we have an intact, high quality headwater areas that protects water quality, protects natural hydrology. The tributaries are the lifeblood of the river. That's where the majority of the spawning is taking place. These tributaries coming off the mountains are really important to protecting recruitment of our native fish into the big river system. With our goal of recovering these fish at a landscape scale, it's really important that the habitat is there to support these fish. The Blackfoot Clearwater Stewardship Act is critically important to maintaining the quality long-term of the entire watershed. There's a lot of sections of the watershed that are in great shape, but with great opportunities for them to lose that great conditions. It could be open for development. We all have the same goal in mind. We want to maintain this. We want to be able to experience it. We don't want to change it into something else. We don't, we don't want to lose it. And that river is what brings us together. Whether you're a fifth generation rancher, whether you're a logger, whether you're a retiree who just kind of happened to fall in love driving up Highway 200. And it's high time that the Blackfoot Clearwater Stewardship Act gets passed. We've been waiting for this and working on this for over a decade. We've inherited this incredible legacy and the Blackfoot Clearwater Stewardship Act allows us to pass it on.